Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I hope everybody got outside. I hope everybody drank their water. I hope if you did not spend time with your family, I hope you got some good alone time, maybe walked your dogs, spent time with your animals, had a good weekend. I had a really great weekend with my family. We went to a conference on Saturday, which was really cool. And so we had a good weekend and I hope you guys did as well. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the highly requested and highly talked about situation that happened with the Kansas City Chief fans in Kansas City, Missouri. Now this situation is still developing and new information seems to be trickling out pretty much every day. So I am going to do what I typically do. I'm gonna tell you guys what we believe happened as of now, from the public information that is already out there, this is all from very, very, very public news sources. I'm gonna give you guys my opinion at the end. We're gonna talk about some theories and some different things that has come out. And I do believe that this is going to be investigated for, for a little bit. And I'll tell you guys more about why I think that towards the end of the video. I don't think that this is done just at what we know as of now. So. If you guys do not know, four men went to their friend's house, so it's five men all together, to watch the game, the Kansas City Chiefs game, on January 7th. So they all the four guys went over to the fifth guy's house. Now the names of these guys are 37-year-old David Harrington, 38-year-old Ricky Johnson, 36-year-old Clayton McGinney, and Alex Weimer Lee, who were all at Jordan Willis's home. Now, according to what I could find online, these guys have been friends for a long time, or at least some of them. Some of them even went to high school together. And I could just see it. I mean, Kansas City is having another really good year. So the four guys are over at Jordan's house. They watched the game on January 7th and the Chiefs won. So they was probably all excited drinking. Oh. However, when January 8th rolls around, nobody's family had heard from three of the guys. Okay. Three guys that nobody had heard from are David, Ricky, and Clayton. Now, mind you, I don't know the situation with David and Clayton, but I did see Ricky's brother speak out and say that he is a father of three. Okay. So you guys can imagine your husband goes to a football game. He don't come home that night. You don't hear from him the next day either. Calling, blowing up his phone, blowing up Jordan's phone. Nobody can get a hold of anybody. The next day rolls around, January 9th, and still nobody hears from the guys. None of them. Finally, on the evening of January 9th, the fiance of one of the guys decided to go over to Jordan's house herself. When she goes to Jordan's house, this is where she sees two of the guys' cars parked right out front. I could just see it now. She was probably like, he better, he better, you know, what is he doing in there? Well, I don't know. Two days later, she was probably really concerned one way or another. Now she went up there and was banging on the door. I saw different Facebook posts. I, get, I don't know how true all this is, but that different people went over to the house to knock on the doors and nobody answered at the home. But the fiance went over there and was banging on the door for 10 minutes and nobody answers the door. She sees the cars out there. So she ends up allegedly breaking a window and she's yelling in the window and nobody's answering still. She ends up crawling into the window. She's looking around. This is when she saw or came across the first body in the backyard. She immediately called the police. Now, when the cops arrived, they found Jordan, the person who lived in the home, and he was renting this home, but it was his home at this time. When Jordan came stumbling out of whatever part of the house that he was in, he was in his boxers and he was carrying an empty wine glass. Like what, what's going on? The police, when they went into the backyard to investigate the body that the fiance found, this is where they found the bodies of two more guys. So. Three bodies deceased in the backyard. Of course, Jordan was immediately questioned and he told the police or the investigators that 
he, the last thing he saw was the three guys leaving out the front door and he passed out on the couch and went to sleep. Allegedly, another friend's husband went over to the house and was banging on the door for 20 minutes and nobody answered it. And then the fiance comes into the house and she's banging and yelling and nobody answers, but the police show up and he comes out. So people were like, something ain't adding up here. Something's really strange. So the bodies were taken in and this is when the rumors went all across the board of what could have happened. Even down to people thinking that the guys were just drunk and went outside and froze to death, which to me was the most far-fetched answer because I don't know about y'all, but I, I didn't, I didn't drink a, a thing or two a day in my life. And I just don't see how three grown men could just have that much alcohol that one of them doesn't wake up and say, hey, I'm freezing, let's go inside. That not one of them wakes up Something, something, there was another element there. And so I, like a lot of y'all probably, was really looking forward to the toxicology report coming back to see if something else was in their system. Now, something I forgot to tell you guys earlier was, remember how I said that there was five guys? Well, one of the guys, Alex, he ended up leaving the house at midnight. So he left and he went home. So then it was just the other four guys. He said that the other three guys that had, froze in the backyard, were still alive and well when he left, and then he didn't know what happened after that. This is when people started becoming even more suspicious of Jordan, the guy whose house the three men went to. And it has since come out that he is actually an HIV vaccine development scientist, which seems actually like a really cool job and that he's probably very smart. However, one person came out and did an interview with News Nation and said that he was a chemist and that he would make things for people to help them feel good. Now, I'm going to play this little clip of this video. I want to let you guys know that I don't know if this is accurate. I don't know this guy. I don't know any of these people. This does not mean this is 100% true, and it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Uh, but listen to this. Jordan's a chemist. They all knew him as that. It was easy for them to go have fun, but he f***ed up. He made a mistake. Jordan is somebody that is known from high school as like creating drugs for people to make them feel better in certain situations. Okay, well, you want to do this? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make this for you. I'm going to make this for you. I'm going to make this for you and handing him out. Now the toxicology report did come back pretty quick in my opinion too, and the results were not super surprising, upsetting, but not super surprising. Uh, the things that we know of that was in all three of the guys' system is THC, white powder, and fent. Now I was actually talking to a really good friend of mine before this toxicology report came out. And she was saying that she thought that they were just really drunk. And I mean, yeah, it was possible that they had taken something, but she thought that they were just really drunk. And I was telling her, no, I don't think three of them, I think that they might've taken something or got something in their system. And I told her that I actually, me and my husband had just heard about probably a month or so ago of somebody doing white powder and it having fit in it and them ODing. And that is so crazy because a lot of people think that it is just a certain type of substance that this fent is getting put in. It's getting put in anything and everything. You guys, please, if you're watching, just don't take anything. It is not worth it. These guys probably, I mean, I don't know, but I would have to assume we're having a great time watching the Chiefs win on their way to the Super Bowl again. And they were with their buddies, what they felt like was a safe environment, drinking. Somebody brought the, the white. They thought maybe if I do a little bit of this, I can do a little bit more of this. And they did not know what was in it. And then the one guy goes inside and it saved his life because he passed out on the couch. 
and the other guys passed out outside in the freezing temperatures. And according to some very popular news sources, it actually took three days to thaw out their bodies in order to do an autopsy or any of this stuff. And according to these news sources, the three guys had three times the lethal dose of Fent in their system, which isn't a whole lot when you see how much the lethal dose is, but still the guys had three times that in their system. And that is devastating. Now, something that I found that was very interesting was that on the game that they had on January 17th, which was just 10 days after the incident with these Kansas City Chief fans, it was so cold that people actually needed aid from the fire department because they were getting hypothermia at the game. I found a ton of articles that said that literally while people were at the game, watching the game, the temperatures was negative nine degrees, but it felt like negative 28 degrees. Y'all football fans, I mean, wow. You talk about being made different to be out there in what feels like negative 28 degrees. Like, whew. But it was so bad that of course, like at these football games, they have, EMTs and, and fire departments and, and different first responders in case anybody gets hurt or anything happens or one of the players gets hurt. They ended up treating 69 different people for related issues to the weather and like 50% of them having some sort of hypothermia. I also found that in that town since January 9th, 59 patients were treated due to harsh conditions like shortness of breath, cold exposure, heart attack from exertion, motor vehicle accidents, and slipping on ice, all related to the freezing temperatures. Nine of those people ended up being admitted to the burn center for frostbite. I mean, it has been freezing up there. And I even saw someone say online that while they were at one of the Kansas City Chief games, that they saw someone being wheeled inside with frozen vomit on them. Like they had gotten sick and it froze because it's so cold. What do I think? I think this is absolutely devastating. I think that this is happening so much. And I also know for sure that just in the past like three years, being on Facebook, seeing friends or people that I went to school with, you know, that I, I remember, you know, getting in trouble with when I was younger, people passing away left and right from ODing from this stuff. And it is so sad. The only thing I know for a fact is um, I don't accept that my brother just froze to death. There has to be something else involved. Um, whether it's drugs or something else, I have no idea. How are you supposed to heal from something that don't even know what happened. I also looked it up and saw that it's not just adults and there's teenagers that this is happening to as well. And I think that we need to take this as another reminder to talk to our children, even in middle school. Don't take anything from anybody. Do not take a Tylenol from somebody. Do not take anything from anybody and put it in your body because you don't know what's in it. The guy Jordan has since checked himself into rehab and there is an investigation going on. And allegedly, he said that this was a huge wake-up call for him and that he realizes that he has addiction issues and that he needs to get help, which is awesome. I want to bring it back to what that other guy said about him being a chemist. I hope that that's just a rumor, but you better believe that the investigators are going to start questioning people. And you have to be super reckless. Now, again, I don't know if this is true with this guy, Jordan, and if it's not true, definitely don't want to put this on him because this is going to be a lot in itself. For all we know, somebody else brought the stuff over and nobody knew about it or that it was tainted. But if what that guy said is true about Jordan, how reckless can a person be to mix chemicals like that and get, I mean, it's only a matter of time before something bad happens, if that's true. I, I, I when you're talking about Fent, I mean, I, I, it just seems like this could be a situation where somebody bought something from somebody and did not know it was in there because it, it happens. So sad, so devastating. Please, everybody watching this too, don't take anything from anybody unless you get it from a pharmacy or a store and it is a sealed package, 
don't take anything. I don't care if you were somewhere and you have a headache and somebody wants to give you a Tylenol, please run to the Tom Thumb and get it out the little package thing because this stuff is really happening out here and you never know what's in it. So I'm going to be following this. I'm going to be interested to see if they investigate Jordan and if he did have more to do with stuff. We know that he is a developmental scientist and I really hope that those rumors are not true because that can be really bad. And I don't know what it's like up there in Kansas, but I know here in Florida, if you commit a felony, no matter what it is, and somebody loses their life, you can be charged with their murder. Okay, so if you do something wrong, even if you're not intending on hurting anybody, if they lose their life, that's murder. So y'all let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. My heart goes out to these families, the children, the siblings. It's so sad. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I love you guys and I'll see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.